the advantages of working on files inside of Photoshop after raw conversion is the ability to be able to actually soft proof your image to your final output, which in most cases for a photographer is a photographic or inkjet print. So what is soft proofing? Well, soft proofing is simply a technique that allows you to view on your computer monitor what your print will look like when it is printed onto photographic paper. Now this is of course assuming that you have a calibrated monitor to begin with. Now the process of soft proofing happens whilst you're still able to actually adjust and edit your image within Photoshop with your image actually still remaining in its original color working space, which could be Adobe RGB 1998, sRGB or Profoto RGB for example. Now the benefits of utilizing soft proofing is that you can actually correct any shift in color, saturation, density and contrast that may occur when converting your image to a print or a paper profile prior to actually printing anything. Now in return, your print will better match what you see on the screen when viewing your image in its original color working space. Now the only downside of this process is that you'll actually need to save a copy of your unedited image prior to making any corrections for your printer and paper type. Then what you want to do is go ahead and specifically name this file according to the printer, the paper and the output profile that you're actually going to be using to soft proof to. This is best practice and that way you'll have two files, the original and the print file. The original file can be archived and then soft proof to any other output or medium that you decide to use in the future without actually compromising any color or quality. So let's now demonstrate how this process actually works. To get started, we need an image that has been post-processed and converted to a working space profile, which in most instances will happen during the raw conversion process. So this is an image that I currently have open that I have done all the editing inside of Camera Raw and I've just opened it up directly inside of Photoshop and you can see it's a smart object down in the layers panel here. Now the first thing that we need to actually do is just to make sure we actually know what working space we're actually using. Now the quickest way of actually doing that is to go down to the bottom of your working space and you'll see this little arrow down the bottom here. What you want to do is click on that and you'll notice a little drop down menu. If you select document profile, it'll actually display the color profile that is associated with this particular image. So that's the profile that I converted to inside of Camera Raw. Now once we have this information, we can actually proceed to go to view in the main navigational menu and scroll down to proof setup and then click on custom. Now this will bring up the customized proof condition, which essentially is your soft proof uh, dialog box. Now you'll notice here you have the custom proof condition and that's primarily just your, your presets and at the moment it's set to custom. I don't have any presets that are saved uh, so you don't really need to pay too much attention to that until you actually start saving your own presets. Now underneath that we have the proof conditions. Now this is the area that you're going to be essentially selecting all of your different device options. So the first one is your device to simulate. So we're essentially going to simulate how our printer and paper are going to um, oh, sorry, simulate how our image will actually print out on our specific printer on a specific type of paper. Now you'll notice here, if I just quickly drop, uh, click on the device to simulate drop down window, that I have a range of output profiles that you've probably seen already in previous tutorials. So these profiles here are actually my output profiles for my R1800 Epson inkjet printer. So essentially each one of these profiles is specific to a particular paper type because with different papers, they'll have different gamuts and they'll actually print differently to other types of papers. So for example, with a high gloss finish paper, you'll actually have a higher dynamic range, higher color gamut than that of say a watercolor paper or a um, fine velvet, uh, fine art 
uh, watercolor paper for instance it'll, it'll actually be slightly flatter so essentially you want to come in here and find the specific output profile for your printer and the paper that you're actually going to be printing onto so once you've actually selected that you'll notice if I just select say let's let's do an extreme one if I select say velvet fine art paper you'll notice now that that's actually changed the appearance of the image so if I just turn the preview on and off You'll notice, especially in the blacks, the blacks look a lot flatter. So that's what we're primarily doing, where we're simulating how my actual image is going to print out on this particular uh, printer and paper surface. Now, underneath the device to simulate drop down window, we have preserve RGB numbers. Now, this is essentially how your print would turn out if you didn't convert to your specific output profile so if i turn that on you'll notice that it comes out really terrible it, it's it, quite a dramatic change but essentially if i was to print directly to my printer using just adobe rgb and printed from that working space this is essentially a representation of how that would actually print out which as you can tell it's it's terrible it's it's nowhere near my original print so you really want to make sure that you convert to your output profile in order to retain those colors so in most cases when you're soft proofing you're not going to have this checked but it does give you some idea on uh, what will happen if you don't convert to your output profile for printing so I'll just uncheck that now underneath preserve RGB numbers we have the rendering intent which we've gone over in quite some detail in the previous video but as I mentioned earlier you primarily want to choose from perceptual or relative color metric as your rendering intent for not only converting your profiles but also when you're doing your soft proofing so you want to make sure that whatever rendering intent you actually use when you convert to your output profile for printing is the same one you use when you're actually soft proofing otherwise there'll be a slight difference so you'll notice a difference here if I go to perceptual and we just do uh, and then we actually go back to this drop down box and I go to relative you can see quite a big difference in the uh, especially the blacks and how the image is printing overall so there's quite a big change just jumping between those two and you usually want to check if you have a series of different output profiles and paper types you want to check the rendering intent when you're converting because um, that's going to change according to your image and the values in your image so as you can see if I was to use relative color metric all the time the image would look quite flat here but if I change it back to perceptual it's actually giving me a better contrast and better clarity in this image so that would actually be the option that I'd actually want to choose. Now underneath rendering intent we have the black point compensation checkbox. Now this is also going to be a, a visual sort of um, adjustment that you can make. Most of the time I leave this checked but it's going to be dependent on your image. Um, so what you'll find is if I just jump to relative color metric we might notice there's, there's a bigger difference. So with relative color metric You'll notice if I don't have black point compensation checked that the black areas or the darker shadows in my image uh, come out quite sort of posterized and you can see quite a distinct difference between the rest of the image and those areas. But by checking the black point compensation it's actually gone and compensated for those black areas according to the output profile and corrected them for us. Um, and so you really want to make sure that in most cases you'll have this checked but on some occasions you may just turn it on and off to see the difference and to see the, the quality of the, the final output. So I'm going to put this back onto perceptual. Now underneath uh, your black point conversation we have your display options and these are particularly just on screen so you can choose to actually simulate your paper color or your uh, black ink. Uh, if you're using an inkjet printer for example or going out to pre-press so often with uh, pre-press or inkjets you'll have sort of a uh, you'll have an off-white or a yellow white and you can actually choose to simulate that by checking them on and in most cases it's going to make your, your image look quite um, drastic in this particular example it will because it is actually quite a dark image um, so they're, they're things that you're probably not going to utilize that much but they are there if you do choose to play around with them but as I say they're probably more for pre-press as opposed to sort of more photographic printers. 
So once you have actually gone ahead and actually set up your custom proof conditions, what you can do is then click OK. Now on a PC, you can hold down Control and Y in order to flick between your soft proof and your working space profile. And on a Mac, you can hold down Command and Y, which I'm going to do. So just by holding down that, you can actually toggle between the two uh, between your working space profile, which you'll normally view, and your soft proofing. And if you look up the top here, you'll see that there's a profile. And that's, so that's the profile I'm soft proofing to at the moment. Now, if I actually go ahead and toggle the soft proof off, it disappears. And as I do that, you'll notice the change in the image itself. So that's somebody to actually be aware of. And what you'll notice with how I've corrected the image originally, it's slightly darker than that of what... Uh, of how it's actually being represented when I soft proof it. It's coming out a lot lighter and slightly less saturated. So what I can do when I'm soft proofing is actually correct my uh, correct and compensate for this difference in how it's actually going to be printed out. So I can now go and choose to add say a um, new adjustment layer where I can add it, say curves and we'll click OK and I might just add a little bit of density to that to get it slightly closer to where uh, to where it was looking in the actual workspace when I had the soft proof turned off and then I might just choose to add a little bit more uh, saturation hue and saturation just for this quick example and we'll just might pump that up just a little bit just to sort of compensate so essentially by soft proofing, you can compensate for how your images are actually going to be printed out. Um, so I've made a couple of slight adjustments there that should be a lot closer to how I originally edited my image and viewed it through its working space. Now, you'll also notice that if you go up the top here, you can actually go to view and you'll find not only proof colors, which I just toggled between using that little keyboard shortcut, but you'll find gamut warning. A gamut warning will display all the colors that are actually outside of the gamut that are going to not print up very well at all. So everything in gray here essentially is outside the gamut of these particular uh, of not the actual um, output profile. So what you can do in order to fix this up is I could actually go in there, target those specific colors, and adjust them in order to get them closer and more in range with the output profile and the printer and the inks that I'd be using to actually print out this image. So I could make some adjustments just to bring them down. So as you make your adjustments, you'll actually reduce the amount of gray that's here. And if I just toggle between my soft proof, you'll notice there's actually not much, um, there's no, not, no difference in how the actual gamma warning is displaying. But in some cases, you'll actually see as you jump between all your different, um, all your different output profiles, you'll notice a difference in the gamma warning. So this is velvet, but if I go to say um, premium glossy, you'll notice that now we've got actually less gray, especially around the sun here, that it's actually uh, it's able to be uh, able to actually print that. So you can play around with this in order to get the result that you're relatively going to be happy with. So by now, I hope that you've seen the benefits that are associated with soft proofing your images prior to printing but with that said soft proofing is very dependent on how accurate the output profile that you're actually working with is and whilst the process of soft proofing is extremely powerful you still need to make sure that your images are converted to the same output profile that you choose for soft proofing prior to printing otherwise you'll end up with something very close to the preserve RGB numbers checkbox that is in the soft proofing window.